Welcome back. So after getting the avionics fired up on Friday, I knew uh, this week it was going to be all about um, putting the back shells on all the different connectors and there's probably something like 30 different connectors all together. So as you can see, I've made quite a bit of progress already. This is Monday morning and not only putting the back shells on there, but some of these, as you can see, have a back plate that they screw into and then that back plate lives in the back of um, sort of the slide in housing where the unit will actually slide into and then it will engage uh, the connectors there and most of them have, or the ones that have that, have like a little allen key in the front that helps pull them in and lock them into place. Uh, meanwhile uh, Jeff is in the process here of getting the uh, cowling final fitment there and uh, you can see he's removed that wood wheel that he had at the back there which was helping align everything uh, just to make sure it's all fitting well now and uh, Getting uh, getting to there, there's a few more little things he has to do there before he can bond in that section there that contains the baggage doors, um, but it's coming along. And uh, just to give you an idea of uh, what's involved in just doing some of these back shells, um, I did actually f about 15 of them on Monday, and plus a few other different jobs. I ran a couple of other wiring runs that hadn't been done yet as well, but as you can see, I spent most of the day just sort of squatted down in the cabin working you know either down low or a little bit higher up um, and ideally you know I've thought about this a lot the way you really do this for production is is to actually have all this done that whole instrument panel and everything done completely outside of the aircraft and uh, you know on a nice bench where it's easy to work and then uh, exactly like the auto companies do just have a a little crane type fixture or something that can lift the whole thing into place and it would contain everything side sticks rudder pedals um, and just basically only link up to what it needs to with respect to going through the uh, forward pressure bulkhead um, so there you can see there's one of the connectors all finished off there and I uh, just wanted to show you there underneath um, there you can see I don't know if you saw it before but there's the um, lower wing skin is actually just sort of clicked into place there and Jeff had placed that there uh, so you could just check fitment and do a little bit of trimming there and main, mainly um, to see how the cowling mates up to it as well there you see he's got all the clicos along the edge there and uh, it's fitting nicely and that'll make it easier when we pull that wing off and actually close that out that that uh, wing skin is already trimmed and just to give you an idea of um, what's involved here with um, doing one of these connectors here I'm just putting a little bit of Loctite there on uh, one of these screws that holds the shielding um, in place and uh, then uh, you know you connect all the different ground shields to that and screw it down tight and that kind of finishes off that that connector but yeah as you can see you did quite a lot of those and I still had more to do and got most of them done now on Tuesday and I still had to do some other stuff that you'll see coming up but it's been pretty busy and but I am making really good progress with it it's just a lot of work um, and just tiring too because you're um, constantly sort of uh, hunched over in the cabin working on this so it's not ideal but um, anyway that's the way it had to be because I wanted to make sure that all the wiring was working in the cabin before I did all the back shells and such and close it all out so that's pretty much what happened on Monday So now we're on to Tuesday and Devon's been creating these little hard points out of some leftover 7075 and these are going to help uh, reinforce those door handles because a little bit of carbon fiber on that outside edge wasn't just going to be enough to support those. So that's how that sits in there and that um, the little bit of 7075 is going to have some extra holes drilled in it and then just be potted in um, with some uh, resin I believe in order to hold it nice and tight. And uh, yeah, we're back in the cabin again <laughs> and doing more back shell stuff as you can see. So um, I wanted to show you how these uh, ones all connect up to this back plate here. So this is a back plate for the GTN uh, 750 which is the main uh, navigator and, and radio unit. And as you can see this, what have we got, one, two, three, four, five different, um, you know, pin out connectors on there plus three different antennas and a little uh, cooling fan as well so what ends up happening is um, once you've created your connector and done all the wiring everything on there and you've put the back shell on there and all the grounding wires and stuff then you just slot it into place in that um, back plate 
and then there's a couple of little um, flat head screws one on either side that uh, get screwed in there and that holds the connector into that back plate nice and firmly and then ultimately once all the connectors are in there that whole back plate gets uh, screwed into the back of the housing that the GTN 750 slides into so when you slide it in um, all of the um, connectors are just sort of lined up and just self-engage including you know the three antenna um, connections there and then there's a little allen key sort of little hole in the very front of the GTN 750 where you put an allen key in there and you turn that allen key and it, it works this little cam system that actually draws the unit into place so you don't have to actually push it in yourself and likewise when you want to get it out you just turn the allen key around the other way and uh, it'll slowly push itself out into the point where you can actually just grab a hold of it and slide it out so it's kind of a neat system and you can see there on that back plate on the right hand side there's a little um, black kind of uh, rectangle thing and that's just a little bit of neoprene seal there um, and then behind that there's a f there's a little fan a little cooling fan and that also has a little connector on it as well that you just plug into one of the other connectors so um, it's a t it's just incredible how much there is with this wiring and I've looked at um, how Cirrus does their aircraft and stuff and their wiring is like way more um, runs and stuff than what I have here and a lot of that's because I, I believe that their LIUs, their line replaceable units are stored in the tail of the aircraft whereas you know I've got room to put them all up front so there you can see there's that plate now uh, just sitting in the back there of, of the housing and there's uh, three or four screws at the back there and just tighten those up and then that's all set so next on is uh, these are the antenna cables that I did a long time ago or some of them so there's a GPS one and then there's a COM one and there's a NAV one and these all hook up these are the ones specifically for the 750 so um, at the back of the 750 unit there I just basically hook hook that up and then um, you know feed it through where it's going to go through just um, along the top of the keel there to where those bulkhead pass-throughs uh, were that I installed a few weeks ago and then ultimately it goes through the pressure bulkhead and then uh, connects to the um, the runs there that you saw again a few weeks ago that run down the inside of the keel there and then out to where the antennas are and uh, likewise the one that's for the GPS goes into the nose so uh, there you can see those are the ones or well, that one there is uh, the GPS one that I just pointed to and there's the cable hooked up there and it runs basically back up there and uh, still through and then up here and then through the bulkhead at the front there and then that runs to the GPS antenna that's sitting out uh, on the nose door there on that little plate that you've seen before so it gives you kind of an idea how that one works and then uh, the next one this is uh, the com one for the communications radio and that just goes through the bulkhead there um, kind of underneath all that stuff there and I'm going to tidy up this wiring a little bit more I'm just going to basically bundle everything together um, once I've got everything sort of sorted out and working but uh, there's no interference with anything right now so it's all good and it, you know it looks okay doesn't look as neat as I'd want but again this is the first time I've done this and uh, having done it now I think I'd um, design it to sort of have like a, a single backbone where everything came in and off the backbone and not having uh, different runs sort of crossing over so this is the connector or one of the connectors for the uh, GSU 25 which is the air data computer and just to give you an idea what it takes so uh, for putting a back shell on there uh, so the first thing you've got to do is um, take the wires there that are the uh, shield wires and there's two of them in this case because this is basically running on the CAN bus system here so I th believe that's all this this particular one has is just two wires um, into it or two sets of wires um, which is CAN bus in and CAN bus out and then the two shields off of there so what I do is I just trim them to the same length because those are shields that I put on a while ago um, or little pigtails that are sort of connected to the shields and then I strip off the ends of either of those and just strip it off to about I don't know three eighths of an inch or something like that and then I take one of these uh, ring terminals that uh, I have and basically put that on 
over the two wires there to sort of connect them and then uh, using the crimper that I have I just crimp that in place nice and tight make sure it's not going to come off so nothing complicated with this step so that's crimped in place and then ultimately now that that can get uh, screwed on to the back plate itself um, but before I do that uh, the next step is to uh, uh, well there actually that's what I'm doing right there is putting a bit of um, Loctite on a screw there and then uh, screwing that ring terminal onto the little tab at, at the bottom of the back plate uh, so that's in place and then I can come back and uh, put a little bit of electrical tape around the wires there where they're going to get sort of um, compressed in and sort of clamped into place on the back shell uh, because that's how you stop the, the wires from getting pulled out of the pins you know if, if someone was to sort of you know be manhandling a little bit and pulling too much on the wires you don't want them to come out of the pins there that would be bad so um, anyway there as you can see now I've got the uh, the little ring terminal there I'm just tightening that up that's on the very end of the back shell so you can see how much time it takes just to do each one of these and uh, this is about 30 to do all together so now you can see now the, the connector there sort of lives in that back shell and so what I need to do is put a bit of tape around the wire there's my little bit of red electrical tape and I'm just using red because I had mostly red tape left I didn't have very much black left so just wrap that around the wires there where they're going to get sort of uh, clamped into place and that just protects them a little bit stops them from potentially getting sort of uh, you know frayed or worn through and that Tefcel wiring is the stuff that we use for aviation it's pretty durable it handles a ton of heat you can heat it up with a heat gun like crazy and it won't melt um, the shielding and it's uh, it takes quite a bit on the, um, the outside covers it takes quite a bit of effort uh, to uh, cut those covers off when you want to sort of you know expose the in inside wire so it's pretty durable um, but the wires in themselves inside they're not not as much you know they're um, shielding on them just you know it's not as strong as what the outside stuff is so anyway that's what the electrical tapes for and once that's in there then you can uh, put the clamp on uh, over that and that's what I'm doing here so in this particular case there's just a screw on either side and you just screw that down and it holds the clamp uh, tight which is basically clamping down on the wires and again as I said stopping them from um, having a chance of actually being pulled out of their pins or the pins being pulled out of the actual connector themselves so um, yeah I hope you guys appreciate <laughs> how much effort goes into this I'd hate to think you know someone who does this you know all day long for their job it must be uh, just so tedious um, and I'm looking at this video now I'm just watching it and this seems like it was three days ago and it was only about seven hours ago <laughs> I was doing this so it just I don't know today's just been a real blur uh, anyway I want you you guys to see you know how long it takes to do some of this stuff and that's why I'm kind of just showing this to you in real time right now instead of speeding it up so you can appreciate it so finally there um, I believe yeah, I'm putting the cover on there and uh, and that is the end of that connector so it's uh, pretty much completed just two two tiny little screws there that hold the the final cover in place and uh, actually been pretty good I haven't dropped any screws there I've been just on it with that it's you know normally you think oh yeah I'm gonna drop a screw and then it's gonna fall down in that wiring and now on the floor and you're going to go and find it and I've been really on it this this week haven't dropped one so and then ultimately you know that connector gets uh, pushed onto the unit in this case the uh, Adahars unit which is the data computer and uh, then just has a couple of little um, sort of you know uh, screw things or bolts there that hold it in place and ultimately you get on there with a screwdriver and just tighten those up so it won't fall out of place and uh, that's what it looks like down and under there so and then the one for the other side 
And uh, so there's, let's see, yeah, there's a, this is the one for the autopilot now, just to show you. That's for the um, the roll control. Got that one completed. Just plugging that into the back of the the servo, the roll servo there. So it's tucked down in there, but it wasn't hard to do it um, to get that on there, and then just a screwdriver in there to tighten up those uh, the bolts that hold it in the place. So there you can see it's living down in there. So a lot of work down in here, as I keep saying, but boy, it's amazing. Uh, anyway. On to other things, so here's the cowling with the two parts sort of just sort of joined together still. And uh, Jeff wanted to have it like that so when he bonds that first section into place, um, it's nicely lined up, um, cause the, so the back section lines up with the upper section, so, and ultimately it'll come apart. And uh, more wiring, so this is um, this pressurization controller thing, and this has 37 pins in it, and this is, you know, full on military grade thing, look at all those little pin outs there and the pins are super tiny and I think I had to wire up um, not only about a third of the of the pins in those and you'll see that a bit later and uh, so there's uh, that little hard point there and these door handles now bonded into place and that's setting up so these um, armrests then uh, should be able to go off to uh, the, the upholsterer uh, tomorrow maybe or at least I'll, I'll take them with me and drop them off on Thursday morning and uh, then another little job there that's a little transformer uh, 12 sorry yeah 12 to 24 volt transformer that runs this thing because uh, that's a 24 volt or 28 volt actually 28 volt um, pressurization controller so we need to step up the voltage from 14 to 28 and here's Jeff getting ready to bond in that lower section now he's putting the high sole on the flanges down underneath there in preparation for bonding that section in and this is really good progress for us because now that's bonded in um, Jeff can cut out the baggage doors in there and we can also do the final trim work on the cowling stuff and uh, there you can see now it's, it's bonded in and so you can take off that that rear lower section of the cowling and and uh, just get the last couple of bits things done there and pull off the wings and uh, ultimately get those closed out and then I can finish up the stuff that I need to do in the engine compartment so everything's sort of flying along pretty good now and there's that uh, pressurization thing so I needed to put a couple more runs in there for the RS232 that I forgot about um, so because uh, this is one thing I spent you know several hours just wiring this one up today because I had to check on everything in there as you can see I'm just pushing one of the wires into place there on that and there's a loop there because one of the things had to be sort of bridged and uh, yeah so that one's pretty much done now and connected so all kinds of progress going on but uh, just to give you an overall overview here um, back here I've still got to do a couple more back shells and tidy up the wiring a little bit more and then get the air conditioning unit in and hooked up the electrical for that and then um, the rest of the electrical for the center console, I've got to drill the holes for the headphone jacks and a whole bunch of stuff. But anyway, it's moving along pretty well, so I'm pretty happy with that. So that's our update for uh, the first half of this week. And uh, thanks again for watching and tune in again on Saturday and see what kind of damage I can cause by then. <laughs>